I made this point to Alan Combs in a radio interview a few years ago when he was arguing to me that America is not a Christian nation. And I said, Alan, this is a Christian nation, and I will prove it to you. If you drive home tonight, and you drive in your driveway, and your neighbor's dog has gotten loose and runs in front of your car, and you run over your neighbor's dog and kill the neighbor's dog, if you're any kind of a man, you'll go over to the neighbor and knock on the door, and you will say, I just killed your dog. Alan, that's called confession. And the next thing that you will say is, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to. And your neighbor, well, it, it, and that's, that's asking for, that, that's, that's confession and then repentance. And, the, and then once you repent, you'll say, please forgive me. I didn't mean to kill your dog, I didn't mean it. And your neighbor, if he's any kind of man, he will say, Alan, you didn't mean to kill the dog, it really wasn't your fault. You've confessed and you've repented and you are forgiven. That's called redemption. And people in other countries simply don't do that. <laughs> people in other countries run over your, do your, your their neighbor's dogs and they're like, and fuck you, yeah, because this ain't a Christian nation, yo. Yeah, I'll run you over next, bitch. <laughs> Wait, what? In what little world does, does that prove that America is a Christian nation? Ignore the fact that like the Ten Commandments are not law except for a couple of them, like two of the eight, three if you count perjury. Ignore all that. That you know, America's a Christian nation because if you have a conscience and you run over your neighbor's dog, you don't just leave the dead dog underneath your car and go walk inside and watch Fox News. <laughs> because people have a conscience. I mean, I, I would not run over my neighbor's dog. In fact, recently I found my neighbor's dog like a half a mile up the road and I recognized him and I grabbed him and I brought him back to my neighbor. You know, it's not because I'm a Christian or this is a Christian nation. It's because I'm a decent fucking human being. My morals don't come from a higher power, dipshit. It scares me that you need a higher power in order to do good things. And you think you're so morally superior to everybody. When it, you require Jesus and, and the Bible in order to do a few decent things when it's just the way I am. So, fuck you. Who's next? You know, I realize it's only June, and, and uh, but it's a good June. <laughs> and um, the holidays are coming early this year. So, uh, particularly for uh, these Koontz cheerleaders and for students across the, the state um, of all faiths who want to freely express the simplest of uh, appropriate greetings during holy days. Um, you know, it's a shame that a bill like this one I'm signing today is even required, uh, but I'm proud that we're standing up for religious freedom in the state. Religious freedom does not mean freedom from religion. And, and here's your first hint that someone has absolutely no fucking clue what they're talking about. Because without freedom from religion, there is no freedom of religion. If you're not free from having religion imposed on you in, in like the public square, at a public school, in a courthouse, when it's funded by the government, you, if you're not free from that, you don't have your own religion either. You don't have your freedom of religion without the freedom from religion. And when, it's, when it comes to Christianity, let's ignore all of other religions and just look at Christianity. There are thousands of sects of Christianity. And so now you've all got to agree. All you Christians have to agree on exactly what the Seventh-day Adventists have to agree with the Baptists, have to uh, you know agree with every other, the Protestants. All of you fuckers got to agree. Even though you all agree on the same religion, you disagree about all the details. All of it. And I'm sure you would be upset if you felt that the wrong version of Christianity was being taught to your children. So you have to be free from that in order to truly be able to practice your religion. And ironically, it is that freedom from religion which atheists are using. Not, not to try and say, I don't want your religion, I want to impose something else. We just don't want to impose any of that shit. Just leave it be. These people would cry a, a fucking bucket if if you say holiday tree. Now, 
they want to for they don't want to just say Christmas tree. They want you to say Christmas tree. They want your children to say Christmas tree. They they can't just be happy to call it a Christmas tree themselves and have their family call it a Christmas tree. And I mean, fuck it. I don't call them holiday trees. I'm an atheist and I call them Christmas trees. But that's my fucking choice. If someone else wants to call it a holiday tree and it's a much more broad term and all inclusive, like these are the holidays and a lot of people celebrate stuff. It's not a Christian only thing. That's why we don't only call it a Christmas tree. That's fine. You, your kid can still call it a Christmas tree, by the way. You, your kid, when he comes home, doesn't have to continue saying holiday tree. You, you, oh, we're so persecuted. We're just fucking persecuted. I couldn't force you to say what I wanted you to say. Therefore, I'm persecuted. <laughs> Uh, last October, matter of fact, in this room, I, I said that government leaders owe it to the people of all religious uh, faiths, all people who want to project their expressions of faith, uh, to ensure everyone has the right to voice their opinions and worship as they see fit. Unless you want to call it a holiday tree or not worship Jesus <laughs> or, you know, or do anything that's other than Christian. Because then they're up in arms. The, the, the same guy that's like, people should be able to freely do what they want to do. He, he, the same motherfucker would have a huge issue if you were trying to, if Muslims were trying to like shove Islam into Texas schools. He'd be like, look, at the, it's an outrage. Where's our freedom from religion, which I refuse to admit exists until I need it. Fucking idiots. Like freedom to these people is literally just the ability for them to do and like do what they want to everybody that's freedom they, they have no concept of other people being free from your bullshit and no concept of it they, these people are just i'm a off in little fucking rick perry land <laughs> i'm not afraid to admit i'm a christian and all these gays serving in the military and i think i know what's best for people i'm fucking george bush jr jr <laughs> yuck and a pledge to work during the legislative session to find ways to preserve religious expression, explore ways to protect people of faith. People of faith too often feel they can't express their faith publicly. And if they dare display it, they find themselves under attack from individuals and organizations uh, that have nothing to do with them or their communities for that matter. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to think of a good example for that. And uh, yeah, you guys remember the Ground Zero Mosque? You guys remember that? Remember it was like a mosque, like like a number of blocks away from where Ground, you know, Ground Zero, 9-11, the Twin Towers. I remember Christians didn't put up any fuss whatsoever, right? They were like, they were like, it's cool, you you're free here in America to practice your faith and we're not going to impose it on you and we we're not going to like say you're not allowed to practice your faith the way you want right oh yeah that's right the biggest flip out ever from the Christians about like this is sacred ground and like we found a piece of cross beam that's in the shape of a cross this is obviously Christian sacred ground get your Muslim bullshit out of here they were so accepting and so inviting we're like, yes, yes, freedom, freedom. I I invite people of all faiths to express their freedom however they want, right, Rick Perry? The bill that I'm signing today works to address uh, that issue by ensuring that people of all faiths are free to use traditional holiday greetings, display religious scenes and symbols, even on school property. Well, you see, he has to say even on school property at the end because they're so oppressed that they're allowed to do it pretty much any other fucking time. He's like, even on school property. Jesus fucking Christ. So how are you going to do it? Exactly. If you're allowing people of all faiths and this, these kids want to call it a holiday tree and these kids want to call it a Christmas tree, what, how, how exactly are you going to pull that off? Are you going to have a, a Christmas tree and a holiday tree? Huh? I, I, how are you going to pull it off, Rick Perry? Where, since you're respecting everybody inclusively, it wouldn't just be about calling a Christmas tree a Christmas tree and Jesus and, and uh, you know, the, the, the Bible and the Christianity. And it's not all about that, is it? It couldn't possibly be. 
because you guys are so persecuted. You couldn't possibly have the balls to try and shove it down everyone else's throat, right? In no way does this advocate any particular religion over another. Instead, it ensures freedom of expression where for many students, teachers, and administrators, um, it's most important. Because we all know that most of the teachers in Texas are Muslim or Buddhist or Hindu or atheist or any other fucking religion other than Christianity. The, the idea that he's, he actually has the balls to be like, this does not favor one religion over another. However, calling a Christmas tree a holiday tree really pisses me off. And that's the whole reason I'm signing this bill. Because I want to impose Christianity. And I don't want to call it imposing. I like to call it freedom of religion of the teachers and the faculty and the students. Because we we if we just say the students are the ones that just they don't they want to be indoctrinated they don't want to like have any real freedom they want to be indoctrinated by a Christianity they don't understand why they're not allowed to like just stop everything and pray to Jesus why does that piss you off so much well the same reason it would piss you off if he stopped everything and prayed to any other fucking god. They have no ability to put themselves in anyone else's shoes at all. To understand where anyone else is coming from. They just lack that fucking ability. They, they only understand, like, I don't know why they don't like me to tell them what to do. Uh-huh. I, I want to know the average IQ of the moron that votes for this fucking idiot. All right, one more. I am a Christian because of one thing. The resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. That is the foundation of my faith. It is the rock on which my faith rests. That is an objective historical fact. It is a, an objective historical event. Uh, maybe, I sh maybe I should have just ended it on fucking Rick Perry. With abundant eyewitness testimony and no rational alternative explanation there simply is no rational credible alternative explanation to the empty tomb no no other rational explanation there's no other way that it could happen except for divine intervention it, this reminds me of a, a clip from the movie uh joan of arc i don't know if you guys have seen it uh, I'll, I'll show it to you it's a, it's an awesome clip and then we'll finish out the video Are you waiting for someone else? Yes. Who? My visions. Your visions? They're going to come and visit you in here? Yes. That's what I pray for. I want to see that. Do you mind if I stay on the side here? I won't bother you. No! No! No, you, you can't. You can't. Or else they won't come. Why won't they? Because uh, I have to be alone. Oh. They won't come anyway. What do you mean they won't come? Why would they? Because I've I've always been faithful to God and, and, and I've followed everything he's ever said and I've done everything he's ever asked me to do. God asked you to do something? Yes. Yes, lots of things. You mean God said, I need you, Sean. Signs? What signs? The wind. The wind. Wind? And the clouds. Ringing. Ringing cloud. The dance. The dance. The dance. The dance. The dance. The sword. The sword lying in the field. That that was a sign. Oh, that was a sword in a field. No. No. That was a sign. No, that was a sword in a field.
It can't just get there by itself, huh? It can't. So it just doesn't get there by itself. It can't just get there by itself. True. Every event has an infinite number of causes, so why pick one rather than another? There are many ways a sword might find itself in a field. Seems a perfectly valid explanation. But how about this one? But then again, there are other possibilities. Or even faster. And that's without counting the inexplicable. Yet from an infinite number of possibilities, you had to pick this one. You didn't see what was, John. You saw what you wanted to see. So our faith, you know, we're often accused by people on the left of taking this blind, irrational leap of faith to come out where we do, and the reality is exactly the opposite. Our faith is rooted and grounded in the stubborn historical reality and fact of the physical resurrection of Jesus Christ from uh, the dead. Every time we can cross-check the Bible's record of history against external sources, it matches up every time. Repeatedly, time after time after time, historical discoveries, archaeological findings do nothing but confirm the accuracy of the biblical text. So you don't need to worry when the Bible makes claims about history, geography, the origin of all things, when it makes claims about morality and truth, you can trust everything uh, that is in this book. Because historical fact, you know, it, it shows that Jonah lived in the whale and, and that there was a global flood in Noah's Ark. <laughs> Off in your own little la-la land. Seriously, like, that's scary delusional. There's there's delusional where that's like, you know, okay, you, you know, you think you saw something, but, but then there's like, no, no, I know. I know that all the miracles in the Bible happen and that that that, that morality from 2,000 years ago is what we should be practicing today. You're, you're fucking scary. Scary fuck is what you are, Brian Fisher. And the rest of the fucking people, Rick Perry and all the Steve King, all the other morons that I fucking talked to that, that, that seem to explain away in their own heads what you know how it's not imposing their religion if, if they force it on you and that that every word of the bible is true and we should teach it to children in, in public schools and, and all this bullshit fuck you people get the fuck out of our lives for real i mean i, I don't know how else to, to say it to you you want to indoctrinate your children i feel bad for those kids but you have the right to fucking do that hopefully they'll grow up and grow out of it like i did i was indoctrinated young uh, I still talk to my family. They know I'm an atheist. They they understand that I'm not out there trying to take away their religion. I just don't want it forced on me. Got it? It's real simple. It is really, really simple. This is not a Christian nation. Your Bible is full of bullshit, and I want no part of it. Coctopus out.